Hello, hola, guten tag, wie geht's? Welcome to another episode of Owl's Air Guns. Today, we are taking a look at a Ruger Mark IV, uh, actually a licensed copy of a Ruger Mark IV that's produced by Umarex, and this is a .177 caliber uh, spring piston air gun. It is a brake barrel air gun, and it is packaged, sold in a bubble pack, uh, branded as Ruger because it is a licensed copy, and is reported to have a velocity of 320 feet per second. Also uh, has fiber optic sights. In the picture, it looks like both rear and front are fiber optic, when in fact only the front is. Um, rear sight is adjustable. We'll talk about the rear sight in a moment. Uh, is a rifled barrel and um, is one seven seven caliber. I guess is the only other thing they're telling us. It is a one stroke uh, one stroke cocking method. And as we said, it is a brake barrel, so all that we do to cock the pistol is break it in half like that, load a pellet into the breech, close it up, and we do have an automatic safety that engages every time we use this pistol. So in order to fire the pistol, we have to depress the safety and go ahead and fire into our box back there. So... Operation straightforward. This is a low powered pistol. It is spring powered. And what does that mean? Well, we're not going to get extreme velocities and spring powered air guns and pistols in particular are a little more difficult to shoot. They um, are just not as easy to hold and maintain a, a good grip uh, during the firing process as a PCP or a CO2 um, or any of those pistols are. So in and of itself, you should be aware if you're buying a spring-powered uh, pistol that it's going to be more difficult than some of the other pistols to shoot. Now, when I read some of the reviews uh, on this pistol, it seems to me that that's what's happening. Folks just aren't simply uh, familiar with that type of power plant. When I got this, I got it as part of their darts combo, along with the dart board and um, obviously the darts, but um, was also interested in it as a pellet gun. And part of my interest, I had had Umarex makes a copy of the Browning Buckmark, and they made that for years, whereas this is a more re recent um, entry into the market. And I owned that other pistol and liked it sort of. Um, when I saw this was out, I really wanted to try it again. I've owned, like many of the people that buy these, I've owned Ruger Mark IV 22. Um, firearms before, so it was a favorite of mine, wanted to look at it. But when I purchased it, I really assumed that it was cosmetically a Ruger laying over the um, power plant and mechanism that Umarex had used on the Browning uh, licensed copy. I was pleasantly surprised to find it's all new. This is a completely different mechanism from what I can tell, and um, I prefer this one much more. Like I say, spring-powered air guns are a little more difficult to shoot well, and one of the things that has an effect on that, obviously, we're releasing a piston that is traveling forward, compressing air, and pushing the pellet out the barrel. Well, that piston's going from a dead stop, accelerating very rapidly, and slamming to a dead stop again, and then we start our firing process. So that whole um, action uh, can really disturb our aim. Now, what I found in this pistol is the action is brief. It has, in gun terms, what we would call a, a very fast lock time. The time between when I pull that trigger and when the pellet is exiting the barrel is short in comparison to many other spring guns that I've, I've fired. So I feel like this one's a little easier to shoot in that way. I wouldn't call it smooth, I would call it faster, and as a result, easier to hold on target. 
When reviewing this pistol, I want to talk about a couple of things. First, this is an imitation of a firearm. And in terms, you know, one way to evaluate it would be how well does it uh, mimic the original Ruger Mark IV firearm. In that regards, I would give it like four and a half out of five. Um, it does a very good job, in my opinion, of mimicking the look and feel of the Ruger Mark IV. And I have read a number of reviews that let me see that a lot of other people feel that same way. So in terms of imitating the firearm it copied, yeah, I give it very strong marks. Other thing I always want to evaluate is quality of construction. I feel like the materials used here were all good materials. The fit and finish is excellent. Um, the pistol is stiff when you get it, which is not uncommon for pistols A overall and B in particular of spring guns. I've always felt like a spring gun isn't broken in until you put at least 300 rounds through it. I don't know that I've got 300 in this, but I've got over 200. And during that time, the safety, the cocking mechanism um, have all improved substantially. Um, I would say, well, probably a 100% improvement in each of them. And they are stiff when you get them out of the box. Um, the trigger is stiff, the safety is stiff, but you can see now I can work the safety with my thumb, no problem. Um, as far as the trigger, it is a heavy trigger pull, but there's it's not a bad trigger pull. There's um, not a lot of take up, as you can see. I basically feel it hit the wall right there, and then as I press farther, I get a clean break. So that part of it is good. Um, I would give a good marks and all of that. In terms of in terms of complaints or cons, I, I have a couple. Um, one of them is this rear sight. When I first saw it, I was very impressed. I thought, ooh, adjustable windage, elevation. Um, yeah, this is one where the idea was good, but the execution is poor. And I don't know what they paid for it, but the problem with the sight is it shifts. Yeah, it's an adjustable sight that can move on its own, and it doesn't necessarily have the range that you want it to, and as you move to the extremes of the range, either elevation or windage extremes, this movement is even greater. So kind of what you want to do is almost leave it where it is. In my case, I was able to add enough elevation to get it to, to hit where I wanted to. And um, beyond that, you're going to have to leave it relatively centered and um, just kind of adapt to the pistol. So the adjustable sight, meh, I'm not a fan of. If I keep the pistol a lot and, and continue to shoot it a lot, I've even considered knocking that out and replacing the sight. Uh, front sight complaint about the fiber optic is not bright it's hard to pick up uh, you know other than that the shape of the sight overall works well enough the complaint I have is it tends to dig into your hand when you're cocking it um, I don't know that now it is raised enough to, to get close to where it needs to be elevation wise with this rear sight and I suspect that's why it protrudes like that but it's also really where your hand wants to land as you go to cock it and after a while that digs into the digs into the palm of your hand a bit so I would give that as a complaint um, easy loading definitely a uh, good lockup good action there Absolutely. Cocking force is, you know, about what I would expect, uh, improved substantially with time, but I did not see it develop excessive play. I told you I have one of the Umarex produced buck marks, and I felt like it loosened up as much in lateral uh, play as it did in ease of cocking, and that's not the case with this one. This one cocks smoothly, locks tight. Um, like I said, safety's broken in shoots well. Not easy to shoot well, but the gun itself performs well. So let's take a look at um, some velocities and some accuracy with it. 